So, uh, sincere apologies if you already heard this spiel in the last video I posted, but I gotta keep getting the message out there to undo this mess that I've made for myself. If you're unaware, I got suspended from Twitter, so I have a new Twitter account now. You can follow me here at Kayla Says More. This is the second time this has happened to me within the span of a year, and there's definitely no way to get either of my old accounts back. If you're curious about what happened, I made a joke about beating up Tim Pool, and that's a no-no under the free speech man who loves the free speech. So please follow me on this new Twitter account, and with all that being said, let's get into it. So Euphoria and all of its related media arcs have been sort of an ongoing thread on this channel since I started it. In fact, I have since organized all of my videos that I've made on Euphoria, its creator Sam Levinson, and its subsequent HBO sister show The Idol into one playlist that you can find on my channel. And if you've watched one or any of those videos on my channel, you may have noticed that I'm not a big fan of this fucking guy. And luckily for my Google AdSense account, the mayor of Hack City is the gift that keeps on giving because he's always getting up to some trouble in the media and I always have something to say about it. And that also has rung true within this last month because it appears that his biggest hit Euphoria is probably not coming back. And so today we're gonna do sort of a retrospective on why Euphoria got so big, the impact it left on pop culture, and why ultimately I don't think the series is ever going to make a return to HBO. So everyone always gets mad when I say this, but but season one of Euphoria was a fluke. What I mean is, culturally, I think season one of Euphoria came at the perfect time. In my opinion, 2019 was sort of the peak of streaming. There was all this new experimental content happening and none of us had become super cynical about it yet. And Euphoria, in my opinion, was a pretty big landmark of that conversation because it was so different from anything else on TV at the time. Additionally, I think in that point in time, Euphoria benefited from the fact that there hadn't been sort of a Skins, Pretty Little Liars, Degrassi type show in a long time for people in that demographic to latch on to. Euphoria sort of filled that void with its provocative and edgy style, and I think the fact that the show was so visually distinct in its cinematography, its editing, its aesthetic, combined with the chemistry of the cast and their truly, you know, impressive talent, really set the whole project apart from other stuff that has come before it in this genre. I've said this before as well, but I think season one is really good because it doesn't focus too much on plot. It's a slice of life sort of show. They do these reality breaking scenes that are visually entertaining entertaining and impressive. They do these little character vignettes at the start of every episode that really let you into the world of all of these people and you get emotionally invested in their journey, whether or not it has a traditional point A to point B structure. And you know, the representation isn't perfect, but it's definitely there, especially in comparison to stuff that was on TV at the time. The fact that Jules was such a prominent trans character, the fact that she had a relationship with Rue, the way the show took an honest look at the portrayal of drug addiction, which I think Sam Levinson is actually pretty decent at writing because it's clear that he's writing from his own experience experience because he's battled similar demons in the past. Season two of Euphoria was a train wreck in every single way possible, and it's a miracle that that season even made it to air. Basically, it's no secret at this point that Sam Levinson is like the sole writer, creator, director, mastermind behind Euphoria. He doesn't really let anyone else into his writer's room. He has a couple producers who work closely with him, but that's kind of it. You can debate about the validity of that all you want. He's not the only, you know, creative to work that way, but he's not great at it. And that's entirely evident by how season two turned out because in my opinion when I watch season two of Euphoria I feel like I could see Sam Levinson cracking under the pressure of the mammoth series that he created in real time. We've established that he's pretty good at writing Rue as a character because he's drawing from his own experiences with addiction but throughout season two he gets lost with some of the plot lines of these other characters and these plot lines end up all over the place they're clearly too convoluted for him to consistently follow up with until the end of the season so most of these plot lines end up not going anywhere if you want to more in-depth point-by-point look at this, go to my first Euphoria video in that playlist. All of this was not helped by the fact that there was rumors of poor cast management on set. Apparently a lot of the cast didn't get along, most notably Jacob Elordi and Hunter Schaefer, which, you know, limited any potential for either of them to have an arc with one another. It's also rumored that Barbie Ferreira, who played Kat, didn't get along with Sam Levinson. They had, you know, totally different visions for what to do with Kat's character, and she's just, like, not in season two. When season two of Euphoria was airing, it was so popular. It became such a cultural conversation it didn't matter what social group you were a part of, what demographic you were, you were watching Euphoria, you were talking about it and making memes about it online. And I feel like at the time, because it was such like a big part of pop culture, we all collectively looked past the fact that like as each episode progressed, there was not much going on, there were plot lines that weren't going anywhere. And now that we've all collectively had some time to like look back at the season, I feel like most people are less inclined to give it that grace because all of us are like, 
Yeah, that was pretty all over the place and pretty mid. I've talked about this a little bit before when I did my Stranger Things video, but I feel like people are starting to really turn on the streaming model as a form of getting content and consuming television because it's really hit or miss. The Bear, which is another really successful series, is filming seasons three and four back to back right now. And we got seasons one and two within the span of a year. And that used to be more of the norm with television episode production. However, with shows that are massively popular like Stranger Things and Euphoria, they've sort of normalized these four, sometimes five year jumps in between seasons, which is especially difficult considering that in both shows, the characters are supposed to be in, you know, middle school and high school. With Euphoria, it's been long rumored and I think eventually confirmed that they're going to do a time jump for season three, but Sam Levinson was already working on sort of an uneven playing field here because he left the end of season two a complete mess with all of these actual plot lines. And in season one, Euphoria never really had that much of a concrete plot. So, you know, one can assume that he's been floundering on script considering that he is the only one in his writer's room. There's also the fact that the strike kind of slowed things down production wise. And, you know, obviously there was some tragedy within this cast and the show's production with Angus Cloud, who played Fez, tragically losing his wife to a drug overdose. And a longtime producer who worked with Sam Levinson on seasons one and two of Euphoria dying as well. Obviously those things are not in Levinson's control, but all of them are proving to be a really difficult situation when it comes to bringing Euphoria season three to the table. So all we knew since Euphoria ended in 2021, that season three was getting delayed, delayed. We weren't gonna see it for a long time. People were speculating that we were never really gonna see it and HBO was never gonna address it until last week when Variety came out with an article about the current fate of Euphoria season three. According to this Variety article, which I'll link in the description down below, HBO has formally delayed Euphoria. According to this article, the current story is that in winter of 2023, Sam Levinson had some first drafts for Euphoria season three. HBO responded well to them, but then the writer's strike happened, which delayed things significantly. And then apparently Zendaya was not a huge fan of what was already there. This combined with some of the aforementioned production challenges led Levinson back to the drawing board. He came back to HBO with some other ideas for a start for season three, and the execs were not a fan of what he had written. All of this back and forth was also pissing off the cast, who now all obviously have higher profiles and are getting more work in the more traditional Hollywood sense. And so while all of this is being worked out with Levinson, HBO has agreed to release the cast for the rest of 2024 and will come back to them in the fall with a plan to start filming in 2025. So there is a timeline that exists where Euphoria started with one president, then there was a whole other president in between that time, and by 2025, we might have the same president that we initially started with. Now it's entirely possible that Sam Levinson will get his shit together, he'll give HBO a script that they like, and then they'll be able to get the rest of the cast back together to start filming in 2025 like they want to, but even if all of that happens, I think it's highly unlikely that we're going to see a Euphoria season three. And here's why. When it comes to Euphoria's cast, the show did sort of this paradoxical thing where it simultaneously launched the careers of several of the biggest names working in Hollywood right now. And on another much sadder level, many of these cast members were failed. For example, you might hear that the cast is getting released for 2024 to give them the opportunity to take new work and think, oh, that's a really responsible decision on HBO's part. I'm glad they're doing that. But following this hiatus announcement from HBO, there was an article in the Daily Beast with an anonymous cast member of the show who expressed their frustration with how this hiatus was handled. Since January of 2022, we have had a start date of March that turned into June, that turned into January, they said. And then they kept pushing every month from then on. It was two full years of HBO telling all the actors we were going back soon, so we couldn't take some jobs. Before last week I couldn't take any TV jobs, they said. Since they have put it on hiatus, I can now take any job. But what sucks is that we all had more momentum right when the show came out, but now it's been two years of waiting. And I've already alluded to some of the poor cast management stuff on Sam Levinson's part, but since I read this one story featuring quotes from Dominic Fike, who was on season two, I just haven't been able to get it out of my head. Obviously the show deals with subjects such as drug addiction, and that can be really complicated for actors who have experienced drug addiction in the past. And so being conscious of this, HBO did apparently hire what is called a sober coach. And this person is supposed to stay on set and sort of talk through with the cast members who are struggling with addiction, presumably in order to avoid, you know, a possible relapse. And according to Dominic Fike, this person was not great at their job. I was a drug addict and coming onto a show mainly about drugs, it was very difficult. When I was on Euphoria, they kind of just gave me a coach who would just talk to you. It was just some random lady, he said. We had nothing in common. We didn't come from the same places or the same problems. 
It was hard to take advice from someone like that or give a shit. While he said that returning to Euphoria would be dope, he seemed skeptical whether or not it would happen, saying I don't really talk to them anymore. Now I want to make it clear here that I'm not saying that this was directly Sam Levison's fault or anything, you know, this is one account from one person and at the very least this resource was provided, but I just think about this kind of heartbreaking testimonial from somebody and whether you like Dominic Fike's character on the show or not, you could argue that he probably should have never been cast in the first place. And then I think about Angus Cloud and the fact that he was in this environment so long and something about it just doesn't sit right with me, it makes me really upset. Whether it was Sam Sam Levinson specifically or not, I just feel like HBO was so careless with the well-being of this cast. This is especially compounded with the fact that we've heard so many rumors over the years of the cast not getting along and being a rather toxic environment. Although in fairness, I will say that other people on the cast have come out and sort of dispelled those rumors, but at this point it's like you believe what you believe, you know? But it just makes me think, like, do we need another season of Euphoria? HBO needs it because their Sunday night lineup is dead, especially now that Succession and Barry have ended along with Euphoria being an indefinite hiatus. Like, they need that shit bad, and that's why it's happening. That's why they're trying to force this whole production through to the end, because they need the money, they need the viewership. But in my opinion, Euphoria did what it needed to do. I mean, season one probably works best by itself if you don't even, like, consider season two as an extension of that universe. I feel like you can legitimately look at season one and be like, that is a good piece of art, and it should have ended there. I feel like we're sort of living in an era where art is algorithmically decided by people who don't even understand how it works. And I feel like that's what's happening with Euphoria. I feel like Euphoria had its own time in the sun, its own cultural impact. And at this point, it's sort of overstayed its welcome and bringing it back for a third season just seems like it's a little played out and a little bit in poor taste. But what do I know? Maybe I'm wrong, maybe people are really clamoring for a season 3, so if that's the case, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know how you feel about Euphoria, do you think it's coming back, do you think we're ever getting a season 3? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much guys, and I'll see you next time.